What's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 677. And today, my guest is Coach Danny Indio, and he's on to talk with me, really, I'm talking with him, about learning as a martial artist. It's an interesting conversation. We went deep, and we give you all kinds of cool stuff. I, I, think, I think you're going to like this one. It's completely different from anything we've done. So stick around and find out and let me know. If you're new to this show, you may not know who I am. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show, founder of Whistlekick, where everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to know more about what that means and all the things that we do, go to whistlekick.com. Check out everything we've got going on over there. One of the things there, yep, it's a store. Yep, we sell stuff. And yep, you can save 15% with the discount code PODCAST15. Check out all the different things we've got going on over there from shirts to hoodies to gear. I think there's even some uniforms in there. So much stuff. So check that out. Now, if you like what we do, you might want to also check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's a whole separate website because this show deserves its own website. Head on over there, get on the newsletter list. And, you know, we talk often about all the different things you can do to support us and what we do here at Whistlekick. Guess what? There's an easy list, whistlekick.com slash family. We give you links to where to leave reviews. We give you all the different things that would be helpful to us. Some of them are, are really easy. Most of them are free. One of the things that is not free, but I think it's well worth the money is our Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. You can get in as little as two bucks a month. And the more you contribute, the more we give back to you. We just launched a school owner's mastermind in the top two tiers. Do the math and it's a bargain compared to any other mastermind you're gonna get in. So check that out. To those of you who contribute, to those of you who support, thank you, it means the world to me. Now, let's dig into the episode. I'm not gonna introduce it any more than I already have, other than to say, if you're listening to this one, you might wanna check out, there's a video version. Danny and I did it in video as well. So here we go. Hey, Danny, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hey, Jeremy. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's nice to have you. You know, um, this is going to be a little bit different. We haven't done one of these in a while where we have a guest on and we're going, we're going topic first. Usually when we have people on the show, we bring them on and we find out all about them. And then we kind of close the episode and then listeners will write in and they'll say, hey, can you bring that person back on to talk about this, that, or the other? And quite often we will. Right. But we, we met in, uh, as far as I'm concerned, one of the uh, least positive places on the <laughs> internet, YouTube. And you, you were, you're commenting these like positive, thoughtful, clearly introspective posts on what we're putting up. And I was digging them. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you're, you're you know, uh, I came to your to your podcast recently, and um, and I was just listening to them, and 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 I couldn't help but but just, you know, ideas started percolating. I'm listening to you guys. The banter is really, you know, it's, it's fun, engaging, and uh, but it's also informative. And I was like, man, you know, it's almost like in my head I was I was the third person on the show, and I was like, okay, this, you know, and I would chime in, and I was like, well, you know. I feel like uh, 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 this is good stuff. Let me, you know, let, let's get the dialogue going. So, so I commented, you know, and uh, and was 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 really um, surprised, but also uh, uh, appreciative of the response. You know, you you came, you know, and responded, and 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 uh, and it just made me feel like, oh, this is good. You know, this is what I like. This is the, that's the the great thing about social media is when yeah. when you have an opportunity to discover. Um, you know, like I discovered your, your podcast, but then also engage and, and, and have a dialogue and learn from each other, you know, so, totally. so I was excited. The, the best thing about social media is also the worst thing about social media is the barriers True. don't really exist. And, you know, th there are probably a number of folks listening, watching right now, because we are doing this one in video that are saying, wait a second. So he, he found the show and he started engaging and Jeremy started responding and then they pulled him in to do a show. Like this is this is not an <laughs> uncommon path. If you hang around the outskirts of Whistlekick and what we do long enough, like I'm gonna grab you and give you something to do, right. whether it's coming on the show or hey, go go do that thing or go. Uh, can you right. fix that? And it's you know it's kind of the beauty of what we do is that there there's this mission 
and people start to understand the mission and they're like, oh, uh, this, this clicks for me. Yeah, and, and that's what I like. I mean, you know, I, I, I look at it as a, or at least speaking for myself, I'm in a lifelong learning process, right? So mm -hmm. like, you know, there's no, there's no end in sight. Um, no matter how many belts I might accrue one day, no matter, you know, what, what, no matter what level I get to, and this is across the board, not just in martial arts, you know, like there's always going to be something new to learn. And so, so I can't help, but, but, you know, listen to, to a show like yours or, or look up and, and see a video on YouTube. And, um, and, and for me, like, I come with the positive energy, like, you know, what can I learn from this? You know, maybe, yeah, maybe I know, maybe I might come across something in Muay Thai and I'm like, okay, this video that demonstrated some moves, you know, I know 75% of it, but then all of a sudden there's a technique or, or mm -hmm. a different way of doing a technique. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm glad I kept the open mind to like watch it because had it, you know, after watching the first part, I'm like, all right, I didn't know this stuff. And then I, I skip it. I would have missed out on that, that one technique or that one drill or, or, or that one, whatever that one piece of knowledge that, that now has made me, I think better, you know? So, yeah. so I can't help but like, just, you know, find, you know, take that approach, you know? And I know that unfortunately social media does have the, um, you know, it's, it's very tempting to just sort of uh, be that critic and just say, Oh, that's whack. Or, you know, that's, that's corny, you know, and it's very easy to just be dismissive of, uh, mm -hmm. of that. You know, it, it almost makes it, it, it's, it lends itself to that. You know? it, it does. We got to be better than that. And, and I think most of us are, Right. But it takes energy. It takes energy to stay positive and to find value and to, as you say, keep an open mind. And then when other people are being essentially lazy and being critical because, oh, if I say that that's stupid, if I say that that has no value, then I don't have to expend the energy to learn. That now I true. can just cross that off. But what takes even true. more energy is to step out in front and say, now, wait a second, why are you saying that doesn't have any value, right? Like, and so this is where, where I try to go, as I was telling you before we started rolling, you know, I'm trying to get out there and, and remind people, hey, you know, don't, don't be so dismissive. We, we are better together. We learn more when we're willing to keep an open mind and, you know, however you want to look at it, whatever forces are, are pushing us in this direction, this isn't the way it's going. But I think at least with our audience and I think a lot more people too, they're, they're willing to learn. And that's yeah. why I wanted to invite you on because you have some stuff to talk about uh, specifically about learning. And I know we'll talk about other things, but that was the place, the way you, you started engaging on our post, talking about learning and how people learn, et cetera, that I went, this guy's got some stuff to say. Definitely. And that oh, excited well, me. Yeah. No, I'm, and, and it's, you know, it, it is, I mean, it is exciting because there, there, there are so many, um, you know, one of the benefits of, of, of being, you know, alive in this, in this time and place is that we have access to so much information, mm. you know, we have access to, to so many things out there that, that, that can enhance our lives, right? We constantly, you know, see, you know, blog posts and articles about, you know, life hacks and things that you can do to, to improve. And there are actual things out there that can improve how we learn and how we teach. Um, you know, neuroscience and, and, and motor control studies have, have, have demonstrated a lot, a lot of things that we can do, yeah. uh, that we can take from to, and we can incorporate into martial arts. I mean, we see it in professional athletes, right? You know, professional athletes, we, we, we know, uh, uh, have, I mean, granted, they also have, they can afford to hire the nutritionist and they can afford to hire, you know, the, the, the physical therapist that will cater to that particular athlete. Um, but, but nonetheless, you know, they're, there's literature out there. There are things that you can read that you can incorporate into your own training, right? So like, you know, I mean, we all know, for example, the benefits of, of, of you know, seeing a physical therapist and, and or, or getting a massage for, for you know, uh, uh, when your body's aching from all this training. And we do that, right? So there's, why can't we do the same thing for things that can improve our brains or, 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 or ways that we can, uh, uh, things that we can do that will enhance our brain's ability to learn, right? Yeah. And so... That's that's what's led me down the path, and this has been a, a process of, of of years. You know, I, I um, uh, aside from you know w when I was in college, uh, one of the jobs that I did in, in school was was uh, was work as a writing tutor. Hmm. One thing that I found, um, you know, like when I first started doing a, a tutoring in writing, you know, I was like, okay, I can tutor people and you know people that write like English essays, literature, and all that stuff, and because you know that's my forte, right? And then I remember. 
I would have the majority of the students that would come to me were grad students. And, and I'm, I'm at a college level, right? I'm just like, I think I was a, a junior maybe or, or a sophomore at the time. And I'm having grad students coming to me with their, you know, dissertations or, or what, you know, like whatever they're working on, like heavy level stuff. And I'm like, I don't know anything about engineering. But what I did know was the principles of, of, of good writing, right? Like yeah. the main idea and supporting details and that kind of thing. Um, and so I was able to help them, even though this person is significantly smarter than I am, especially when it comes to things like science and engineering. Uh, but the principles of, of, of effective writing remain the same. And one of the things that I, that, I, that, that, that I was like, how is it that this person is so smart, but then is struggling with writing? You know, like they can, they can handle calculus and they can handle, but why, why is, you know, the writing is, is pretty straightforward. Mm. And, and one of the things that I took away from that was motivation, the, the interest, they were definitely interested in whatever they were learning in physics and, and engineering. They didn't really care for the writing. Like they were doing these writing assignments because, you know, it was like, it was part of their, it was necessary for them to get their degree. Sure. Sure. And that to me showed the importance of, of that motivation. When you're motivated, like one of the key things about learning is is having that that interest, that motivation will drive you through the tough times because we all know how hard it is to, to learn something. We all go through that curve. Mm. You know, when you first learn something, you're a beginner in anything, and especially like in martial arts, it just seems overwhelming. It's like, man, I'll never be able to do, you know, that kind of kick or or I'll never be able to learn, you know, these these, these stick fighting routines or, or, or what have you. Yep. And so it seems, you know, like, like, I don't know how they can do it and make it look so effortless and easy, but it's really part of it is that motivation. That motivation is what carries you through. And I'm, you know, and I find that from anecdotal experience, personal experience, and just in general, like the people that stick with martial arts, they love it, you know, and that motivation carries them, carries them through. And that's one of the things that, that, that I, that I found that when it comes to learning is very key uh, to, to, to a person's ability to get better at it you've got to have some passion you've got to have a why that drives you whether it's like you said you know it's it's pursuing an advanced degree or martial arts training if there's if there's something that doesn't click for you it doesn't have to be any one thing it could be a lot of things but if there's something right. that doesn't click for you you're not going to last you're right. not going to be able to overcome those those bad days and you've probably seen this in training and i bet most of the people listening and watching have seen this in training somebody starts they have some early success they're maybe they're a natural athlete and they're they're picking up movements and they're going along and they're going along and then you know 6 months 12 months 24 months in they hit a stumbling block and they're like oh this is hard and they're out Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a common thing. And, and, um, and that's where I find like one of the things, like uh, when you hit that plateau um, where you're struggling, right. And, and we're not talking about like a person being injured or something like that. Cause you know, that, that happens or, or somebody mm -hmm. who, you know, is going through a life thing, you know, starting a new school, moving to a different town, but like somebody, like you said, like somebody who's hit a plateau and now they're frustrated. Um, that's where the motivation that they have to refine that purpose, you know, like, what was yeah. it that got me into martial arts? Is it because I want to compete and, and fight, you know, do I want to start a fight career or, or, or is it that, that I just want to like be fit, you know, because all, you know, all these different things, you know, whatever they're all, they're all valid. Like if, if you want to do martial arts, because, you know, it's a, it's a great healthy way to, to be, that's fine. You know, that's just as good as the person that wants to do martial arts to, to be a professional fighter one day. Um, but I like, but at some point, all of those people are going to hit that plateau. And then that's where you have to maybe, you know, or it may, might be a good idea to rethink, okay, um, whatever that path that you were taking, you know, how can you re-energize it? If, if it's that, you know, maybe you've already hit your, your, your fitness goals, right? So now you're starting to lose interest. Maybe re-energize it with a new goal. Maybe you want to achieve a belt level, or maybe you decide, you know what? I've never, comp I, I, when I first started training, I was just trying to do, you know, lose some weight. Now I want to challenge myself and maybe do a, a, a local tournament or something, mm. you know, and find that so that when you do hit the plateau, now you have a new purpose that will carry you through the next phase, whether it's six months, 12 months, two years, you know, what have you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Let's, let's get into, I guess, methods, methodology, because I know that's a, a part that you're passionate about. If somebody's got the why, I mean, eventually they'll find success. You know, you bang your head against the wall long enough and it will fall down, but that doesn't mean it's the best way 
to do it. And I think early on, you know, the day one, you step into training, you know, if you're a brand new martial artist, just showing up and just being comfortable or trying to get comfortable and, and not dwell too much in, in negative self-talk is probably enough of an assignment for most people. But when you're a year in, two years in, 20 years in, and you're trying to learn new things, whether it's, you know, your 74th form or you've switched from, you know, Tai Chi to Muay Thai and you're going, man, my body learns is, is working so differently in this. There are ways beyond the, the forehead on the brick wall to right. absorb that information. Uh, talk to us about that. Sure. So, so that, that first, that traditional way, let's say of like, just like do it and you'll get it. It's worked for a lot of people, right? I mean, you know, and, and part of it is because, you know, for as long as, you know, martial arts have been around, you know, the majority of martial arts, I think maybe with the exception of things of, of certain arts like capoeira or, 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 you know, arts like that, the majority of martial arts started as a military uh, discipline, right? Like this was a yeah. way that we're going to teach our soldiers to fight, right? And then mm -hmm. over time, it, it, it became, you know, something that was taught to the public. Uh, but because all of these, the majority of these martial arts have this military uh, foundation, it also has that top down, the teacher is right, do as I say approach and yeah. where it's, where it's just like, do the drills, and then you just keep doing it repetitively uh, until, until it's absorbed. And that's benefited the, 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 the student that either has that physical um, capability, um, or can learn quickly, uh, sure. or has that, that intrinsic desire to just like, you know, that, that warrior spirit, let's say, um, and, you know, it's benefited those, uh, but I think about the, the, the art, the person that maybe has the, the, that, that has that potential to become that, but maybe needs, you know, an extra push, or maybe, you know, the, the way they learn is not as, as, uh, 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 as effective as that other person. Right. Right. And this is then where I think, okay, so how would I train that person? Cause we all know that the person who either is a prodigy or, or the person that is just like has intense amounts of discipline and just, you know, can pick things up quickly. Like that person's good. You know, that person could just, you know, handle the just repeat and repeat and repeat until it's absorbed. But for the person that, you know, that other, that other student, right. You know, we, we can, we can assess motivation and goals. That's one thing. Uh, but we can also just say, okay, well, how does your brain work? Right. Mm. You know, and, and one of the things that I find if I was to start a new, practice right let's say if I was going to start some new style or, or you know one of the first things that I would do uh because for me what works is kind of getting the forest for the trees right getting like this overview so you know if I'm at a new school I would I would get the syllabus right usually a lot of schools nowadays they might have like either the course outline or whatever it is that you're going to do mm -hmm. um, and this is stuff that I also learned from you know learning academically you know you kind of get this big picture mentality of, of, your, of, of the things that you're going to learn. And, and then you look at that and say, okay, from what I know, uh, uh, um, what are some of the things that, that are going to be the most effective uh, or the most uh, taught to me in this particular course or in this particular style? Uh, not to say that, you know, what I'm doing when, when I do that is not to say like, okay, this is not important. Like these other things that, that, you know, it's more of like, okay, what are the things that I should focus on when I start my training, right? So if, if I'm a newbie, like if, uh, and, and I go into, into something like boxing, right? You need to learn, you, you need to learn four basic punches, right? You need to learn the jab, the cross, the hook and the uppercut, like that, that, that's like your bread and butter, right? So then, you know, other things like, uh, doing certain punches or doing certain drills, like I'm not going to dwell on, uh, I'm going to focus on how can I make sure that these four punches, you know, that I learned the form, right? Yeah. So then that's getting the, the, the sort of uh, uh, overview of, of the course so that when I go in there, you know, when, when I start, you know, uh, uh, my training, I have, I have like, I can make my goals to say, okay, I'm going to focus on these four punches in the next month or in the next two months until I get them in, you know, in a way that, that looks yeah. proper, you know, that my teacher can say good work or the coach can be like, okay, good. And then build from that because the other part of, you know, the other part of learning, because because we want to make sure that, that the information that we see in the short term ends up in our long term memory. So rehearse, repeating, you know, rehearsing, that, that's one way to do it. But the other way is to link. 
right? So, so now if you, if I'm coming from, if I have a martial arts background, I can use the knowledge that I currently have to link uh, the things that I learned in, in a new art. So for example, mm. if I'm doing something that's say, you know, not boxing, but let's say, you know, it's, it, it's something, it's screamo or it's karate or something like that. Now I can take what I know about punching and boxing and, in, and, and link things from the other art. So if there's a, a technique saying Wing Chun where there's striking, right? It's not boxing, but I can link certain movements, you know, in my head at least. So it's that it helps like this punch, it. but I got to change it in this way. Exactly. So you're not right. starting so, from scratch. You've got a toolkit exactly. to refer to. Yeah, that makes and sense. That, and that's and, and that's right, exactly. And that's that that's what helps. I think, um, you know, that's why I find like when when you train in in something, it then it creates this baseline that then you can, in, you know, go to other arts mm -hmm. and and use that for your for your benefit. Um, it's 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 really amazing how how the brain works, you know. And and I and and part of it though is 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 learning to to sort of you know, uh, accept your limitations, right? So here's a fun fact, right? Our, our brain, when we have, so when we start, like when we learn something first, you know, we, it goes into the, the what's known as the short-term sensory store. Mm -hmm. And that's where for a couple of seconds, you have whatever it is that you just learned or something, you know, whether it's something on the, on the blackboard or a movement, and you have about a couple of seconds where it's there. Then for it to go to the short-term memory, you have to actually, do it you have to you know your attention has to be on that so if the teacher says all right you know we're going to do you know xyz we're going to do these kicks um and then they demonstrate the kicks right that's in your short-term memory for as long as you have you know you're paying attention and then for it to then go into your long-term memory aside from from it being in your attention you have to actually practice it but one of the ways that 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 it goes into your long-term memory is is rep repetition but also linking, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can link it to past knowledge, or if you can find a way to, to link it to, to, to even just like a, a crazy image, something, you know, that, that, that is memorable, you know, all of a sudden that gets absorbed. And then of course you have to then continue practicing and practicing because, you know, you're not going to just learn it all in one day. But the key thing is linking and repetition. Those things work together to, to make something that, that, that's difficult to learn easier. You yeah. Know? I'm thinking about forms and learning forms, t having taught forms to a bunch of people. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't know that I've ever heard someone break out what uh, short term memories, short term sensory store and short term memory. I, I, I didn't know that those two were separate, but it makes a lot of sense because I've had people, myself included, who can follow along with a form where I show them here's, you know, two, three movements, they can do it. And 30 seconds later, I think you said five seconds, it falls out if, if you don't reinforce it. Right. They, they can't do that same thing again. Or right. I, can take, uh, I can take somebody's leg, they're not quite getting the sidekick right. I can take their leg and I can manipulate it and have demonstrate for them with their own body. This is how you do that technique and do it a few times. And then they can start to do it. But if they right, don't practice right. it between this class and next class, they come back in and they don't remember. They've right. forgotten. They haven't committed. They haven't shifted from short to long-term memory. Exactly. And, and so, so, so one of the things, um, so the two things uh, to that point. So one is um, one of the things that, 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 that happens is that the, the, you, you can only store a, a limited amount of information in, in the, in the short-term memory, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's about, you know, I, you know, different, different sources will say anywhere between five and nine things, right? Meaning um, if, if, if right now, if you were demonstrating, you know, uh, certain techniques and, um, and, or actually let me use a, an even simpler example. So like uh, using boxing, right? If I were to say, okay, for this drill right now, you're going to do jab, cross hook, right? That's three things. That's very easy to remember, especially if you've already practiced the jab, cross hook, you, you can even visualize it right now. But now if I said, okay, we're gonna now, we're gonna do jab, cross, hook, left uppercut, right uppercut, pivot, cross, hook, cross, push off, you know, like mm. basically string like 10 things, yep. right? And then if, even if you demonstrate it, you know, anything beyond about nine things starts to like, you need to, you know, the person demonstrating has to repeat it a couple of times for that person to, to for, for it to sink in. And then they have to actually try it. And even if you're experienced, you know, martial you know kickboxer boxer to do these moves you know it might take a couple of stumbles before you get the 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 the, 
that that drill to move smoothly, right? So, you know, one of the things that that would help, especially like a beginner student, is to not give them these long string of 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 techniques to do back to back. You know, instead, just focus on on us on you know anywhere between you know five and nine things max uh, that they can they can absorb that, uh, and it'll make it easier for them to recall it, right? And then the, the when they go home, uh, let's say if they write it down. Hmm. You know, that that act of writing down the move, even if it's just writing, you know, I threw, you know, uh, I did a jab and then I did a hook and that act of writing down is almost like a mental rehearsal because, you know, just the, the physical act of writing makes your mind think, you know, you're, you're trying to recall what happened. That is an opportunity to for it to sink in, for it to be absorbed into the long term memory. That's why, you know, what's interesting about the brain is that it doesn't always differentiate between a physical rehearsal or a physical uh, reenactment of a movement, right? Which is what we do when we're in the mm -hmm. school versus the mental rehearsal, mm. the mental reenactment, right? It doesn't always, you know, it kind of like, especially if you have a vivid imagination and that can be trained. It's not like, you know, you know, people will say, oh, I don't have a vivid imagination. Well, you know, it's just how much the do you use your imagination? skill like anything else. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, if you tell somebody like, do you remember that, you know, like think of like something that's a memory, you know, like the birth of your child or something, they can recall that. So you have, everybody has a vivid imagination. It's just, you know, how much do you, you practice it? Right. But that mental rehearsal, that's another way for, for you to be outside of the classroom or outside of the dojo, the academy, the gym, what have you, and, and for that to be absorbed into, into, into your mind, into your brain, so that then you can, next time you go to class, you can practice it hmm. and practice it in a way that, that is fluid, more fluid than if you, you know, did it, uh, learned it a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, and then didn't do anything with it and did it again in class. It wouldn't be as smooth. Hmm. You've given me some ways to describe some things that I, I've I've always known and done, but now they're making so much more sense. You, you gave the example of like a 10, 12 technique combination. You're talking about jab, cross, hook. Yeah, easy. I, I, I can do that. I can teach that. I, first 10 minutes of a martial arts class with no prior training, I can get someone to move in those ways. And then I was with you and, you know, uh, you said uppercut, uppercut pivot and that's where my brain started to go ah, and it panicked <laughs> because i'm trying to retain the first five and i got i got six and you went on you went on but what i've what i've done and i didn't realize you're calling it linking makes all kinds of sense if i was teaching that it would be you know we'd get up to five six techniques you know maybe i'm not throwing ever throwing them at everybody at once you know maybe we do two or three and then we add one add one add one but one of the things that I'm fond of doing is relating it back to something else. Okay. So, and then it's like one, two out of such and such form. And then we add this and this out of this other form. And it's, you're calling it linking makes sense. Referring back to something that they already know. So it's less novelty right. to unpack. And it, I, I think it's, it's, rather instinctive we tend to everything we experience is related back to things we've done we determine whether something is a threat based on past circumstances it's, it's a pretty right. well ingrained element of our our psyche it is it is and and that and, and if and knowing that you know i uh when i've taught uh people i find i find that i get the best results when when i i use vivid language um mm you know, some maybe humor, uh, or it could be, you know, like, like, maybe, you know, even a curse word can sometimes be <laughs> just thinking in, in that. for helping sync <laughs> things in. Right. Yeah. And, um, and then, and then on top of that, linking it to either a, 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 a tactical benefit for doing a technique or, or some, you know, or, or linking it to a story, like anything that, that creates this, this sort of memor uh, a memorable, um, set of images of, of information that helps the, that, that student, you know, and, and I find, you know, like it's, 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 a it, it's, it's always a good thing to do that. And because, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I've, when I've taught and I just was like, all right, do this. And then left it at that, you know, it, for the students that already have some background or like, you know, let's say they were intermediate level. So they, mm -hmm. they was fine because, you know, they already knew uh, what they had to do and, you know, and, and then maybe they're just adding a few more things, but for the person that, is starting out, you know, um, they, you know, it, it, it's a challenge, you know, and it's a part of like effective learning. A lot of that does depend as much on the teacher 
as it does on a student, right? So, you know, uh, a lot of teachers in martial arts are used to that top down, you know, uh, this is how we do it, this is how it's been done, and this is what works, and just do it that way. Um, they don't want to hear any sort of uh, uh, pushback on, the, on what they, you know, on, on what they know. And that's understandable, you know, because, it's, you know, especially if, if, if you're dealing, you know, I, I do believe in respect, uh, respecting your, not just your elders, but even within the school format, you know, you go in, you're, you're entering this place, you know, be respectful. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the, the person that, that, that is teaching, a lot of times, you know, you'll find certain teachers that aren't as, say, uh, um, um, concerned, or I don't want to say concerned, but maybe aren't as sensitive to, to the fact that for, for a lot of their students, you know, this knowledge is overwhelming, and, you know, and just because they've had results with the students that, that are able to just, you know, like I said, either have their, their prodigies or, or they're just really good or they have a background in something else. And so like everything just clicks or they're super motivated, you know, for the person that, that's, that's starting out, you know, you, you want to build for them. Um, and I feel like if you as an instructor go in and you demonstrate a move, you know, like I, I think there's a way to do it um, that, that actually will help them um, let, let, the sink, let, let this, this knowledge sink in. So you go there, and you, you know, you say, okay, this is what we're going to do. You make, you demonstrate. And then, and then before you start the, uh, the, 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 have them do the drill, you say, okay, um, here are the fine points, you know, of like, you know, again, you don't want to go and, and, and pick out 12 fine points because they're not going to remember, but you pick like a few, you know, three, five things you say, you know, if you do this, if you throw this punch out, make sure that, you know, you lock your shoulder, your elbows out or, or, you know, raise your hand or whatever it is. Uh, and then demonstrate it again, because now, see, like, just by, by, by demonstrating, explaining, demonstrating, you know, it's, it's being repeated, and they're seeing this, you know, and it's going into their, into their minds, and then at that point, you might say, okay, if there's any questions, you can take some questions there, and I would demonstrate it a third time, so I feel like a teacher demonstrating the moves three times, and, you know, before having them do it, is a great way for that, that student to see um, yeah. absorb and then be able to apply when it's their turn to, to practice the drill. Totally agree. There's been a lot of, of improvement in caliber of instruction, the ability of instructors to learn how to instruct, you know, for the longest time, and even in, in, a, in a lot of places today, probably still in the majority of martial arts schools, at least in the United States, maybe the world, I, I'm not, I'm less familiar with martial arts outside the U.S. True. All we need to do to be deemed a, uh, um, a qualified instructor is learn the material, not how to instruct the material, right. but learning the material. So there right. are folks listening right now who may be in the type of martial arts school that we talked about at the beginning, that it's, it's, all, it's based around repetition. It's, the process is you show up, we're going to present material to you, you're going to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, whether or not that is the best learning methodology for you. So let's right. take these things that you're talking about. Let's twist them a little bit. Let's talk to the people who are at a school like that and they don't have any ability to go to the instructor and say, hey, you know, uh, the way you teach is fine for some of these people, but it doesn't work <laughs> for me. And I think you suck. And I'd like you to completely change the way you teach. <laughs> Obviously that's not going to go over well, but what they do have control over is their own body, their own mind before and after class Right. What things can they do so they could be a more effective student and learner in that environment? That's an awesome question. Um, and, 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 I, and I concur, do not <laughs> go to your instructor and say that, that don't, you suck, especially. Even, even if you blame it on us, don't go and say, right. Look, Jeremy and Danny said that you're a terrible teacher because you do this. No, please, exactly. please don't. You know, and if you yeah, do, um, leave my name out. You can say Danny sent you. That's right, fine. you can say you can say I said you, but you know what I would say. What I would say is, look, before you even go there, like just if if, if they really suck, then don't don't train there. You know, like you know, there has to be a certain synergy between the student and the teacher. Totally. Right? You know, certain styles. Uh, there has to be a mesh of emotional and and physical and all that. But um, but yeah. So the the I, I'm a big believer. I'm a proponent of uh, being proactive. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you're gonna learn as a, as a person. Um, the majority of the stuff that you're going to learn and then that, 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 um, that, that I, I'm going to use myself as an example. The, sure. the majority of the things that I've learned, I've learned through self-learning. What I mean by that is I learned something, you know, reading a book or in a course, you know, 
And it's the stuff that I do outside of that class that has, that has helped me absorb the knowledge, right? So I go to a class and say the class is an hour and, you know, and, I've, and I learned you know, the techniques of that class. But it's not that one hour of class where I learned the techniques that sticks with me. It's all the effort and, 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 and work that I did outside of that class, after that class, to absorb that knowledge and use it. So, so if, if, if I learned you know, some stick fighting principles in this class, um, and then it's what I did in sparring later, it's what I did in practicing on my own, solo training, in, in mental rehearsal, et cetera, that then when, when we do that class again, let's say it could be three months from now, it could be next, a year from now, you know, that, those are the things that will help me excel in that class. Mm -hmm. So now what I would, you know, if, if I was, if, if I was talking to somebody who's, who's in that situation that, that, that you described, the first thing I would say is, um, you know, you need to own the fact that, that whatever uh, advancements you're going to get, the, it, a lot of it is going to come from your effort. So you have to have, you know, tell yourself, okay, I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to give myself um, and give yourself a time goal because, you know, when, when we say, okay, I'm going to give myself a month to learn, you know, X, you know, or I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with this for six months until I can, you know, get this belt level, give yourself a, 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 an actual goal, something to strive for. So that way it's measurable. You know, you can say, okay, mm. you know, did I learn enough to, to achieve this, this, this rank? And did I do it in the time that it, it has to be a reasonable time, you know, like if, if, if you know, if your school doles out, you know, ranks uh, um, uh, or not doles out, but like if, if they do tests every six months, you know, um, and, you know, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to do that earlier than that. You know, it's not like the right. teacher's going right. to be like, wow, you know, this is an amazing student. I'm just going to give you the belt. Like that might happen in a movie. Uh, but, you know, give yourself a, a measurable, realistic goal. That would be the, the first thing. I, 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 want, I want to poke at that measurable part, because when I hear people setting goals, it's the number one place they fall down. I'm going to get better at my kick. I'm going to have right. better psychics. How do you define that? Exactly. How do you know if you succeeded? Right. Are you getting a lot better, a little bit better? Those are both better. Set a, set a height target, set a speed target. If you have, right. you know some big heavy bag and you want to be able to fold it in half, right? Like th there are definable, you said measurable, I love that word, elements to any goal. And I think if you can't measure the goal and thus determine success or failure, it's not a goal worth having. Yes, and, 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 and to go along with that, it has to be specific, like you said. So, you know, if I'm just gonna say, you know, I'm gonna improve my kick, you know, but what, what kick, right? You know, depending on the style that you're doing, there could be, you know, you know there's, there's tons of kicks you know it could be you know and, and there's different height levels you know we're we talking about and are we talking about kicking for for a uh, um for a demonstration purpose you know are we talking about kicking for fighting you know in the streets or in a competition you know like yeah. like there's different rules for that and so you know be specific make it measurable um and, 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 and it's important, and this is why I would, if I was to start at a school or if I was to tell this, this student that, that is, you know, has this, um, this instructor that does things a certain way, well, find out if there's like some type of syllabus or course outline, because that's where you're gonna understand, for example, how many kicks you should learn in your class, right? Or, 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 or to, you know, if you're starting out as a, as a white belt and you're trying to get to yellow belt, okay, well, I'm trying to figure out how many measurable kicks and, or I'm trying to make measurable and specific goals so this says that the yellow belt, so to pass the yellow belt test, I need to learn these five kicks. So now, now you at least have an understanding of what are the, 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 the kicks that you need to focus on between now and that yellow belt test, right? So that's how you can set your goals. And then, you know, it's very important to collect data and feedback about yourself um, from, and, and some of it, it, it you get from, you know, uh, 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 sort of like your, your own perceptions of things. So for example, if you're sparring, Right. Um, you know, a lot of people think of sparring as like, oh, you know, I'm going to go in there and, and, and look tough or, or, you know, like, like they measure the, the results of a sparring session based on did they kick ass uh, or, or, did, you know, or did they get their, you know, their, their butt kick. Right. Um, and I mean, I guess that could be fun to, to some degree, but it really doesn't, 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 um, it, it doesn't, the sparring is not for that. You know, sparring is not about whether or not you, won or, or lost you know the sparring is hey i went into sparring with this, this and i tried to do these these specific kicks 
or and and how did I do? Did I do them? Did I not do them? Um, yeah. I sparred somebody who's at a higher level than I am, you know. And and if I couldn't do these kicks, that might be why because that person was able to block them and and, and just you know or or time it and catch yeah. me before I threw those kicks. Or if I did against you know somebody who's who I'm better than, and I do I did all those kicks and they they work beautifully, right? But like without assessing you know that that data without saying okay I did all these kicks greatly against somebody who's at a lesser level than I am, you might come with this this sort of this notion that like, man, I'm the man, you know, like I I can do this and you know I'm the best. But it's important to collect this data and, and, and feedback about yourself so that you can um, really assess what you're doing. So so I would definitely start with looking at like the, the 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 syllabus. And if there's not a syllabus in your school, then you know you can Google, you know, you can search things, you know. So if, if your school doesn't have a, a some kind of course outline or or, or even like you know, the, um, the things that you should learn, you know, up to your, to the next level that you're trying to reach, you can, you can talk to your instructor about it, or you can, you can search it and say, okay, well, you know, in this art style or this art form that I'm doing, um, these are the things that a beginner should know, you know, and, 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 and again, like you, you take that information for yourself. You don't go to, you know, you don't take that information and then go to your instructor or your peers and say, well, this is the real truth, you know, like, no, it's not about that. This is, this is about getting information that you can then use to act upon, you know, so that you can set your goals and your motivation and then assess yourself as you go along. Right. Now, after doing that, then I, I, I personally believe that, that um, if you get to your class, and this is something you can start doing today for any, any martial artists that are listening, uh, to get better, to learn uh, quicker and more effectively, if you start going to your class 15 minutes early, if you make that consistent, just get to your class 15 minutes early, it'll do wonders for your, 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 your future training. One, I mean, you know, we've talked so much about that, that positive mindset that you need to, you know, the motivation, totally. right? To, 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 to say. Now imagine like when you get to a class late, you know, like I, I, you know, it's happened to me. I get to the class late yeah. and I'm like, you know, throwing on my uniform, I'm flustered. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I feel embarrassed because you know, the class is there. And, you know, and especially as a, if you were a, 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 an advanced student, you know, I feel even like the burden of like, man, like I should have known better than to like show up in front of the, like the, the you know, the, the younger students or the, uh... anyway, you go in there, your mind is not on the training. Your mind is on everything else. You're trying to catch up. You're trying to like listen and, and, and your mind is not settled. If you get there 15 minutes early though, one, you know, you have time to, to sort of get into the mindset that you need for the class. Yep. Um, you can get a preview of what's going to be in the class. Maybe the instructor or, or whoever's going to be teaching, uh, whoever else is going to be teaching, or one of the students. They might say, "Oh yeah, today we're going to do, we're going to work on clinching," um, and and you can take that information, and you can take like a minute or two, a few minutes, however long you want, after you're like dressed and everything, to visualize that. Mm. Visualize, you know, what do what, you know? Okay, we're going to do clinching today. I remember I learned there's three three types of clinch that I know. You know, and you can just play it in your mind. And, and what that does is almost like, just like you physically warm up, you know, you're mentally warming up. Exactly. Getting to this mode so that when you get into the class, you know, the information you absorb it, right? So then, you know, we talked about linking earlier. So if you're in the class and say, and say okay, you know, the instructor's talking about clinching and, and they demonstrate the first three clinches that you already know. And then they say, okay, now we're going to build on those clinches and we're going to do this, or this is how you can fight off those clinches. But now you have the, the, the you know, you're, you're prepped, you know, mm. you're like, you're there. You're, in you're the mentally zone. warmed right. up. Exactly. You know, just just exactly. as, you know, you're talking about getting to class early and it, and it blows my mind how many people roll in at the last minute. They just want, you know, they just want the class time. When, if, if you think about it, most of us have experienced this on a physical side. You're talking about the mental side, which I think is even more important. How many of us, especially as we age, it takes 5, 10, 20 30 minutes to physically warm up and be like, okay, right. now things are grooving. So what do the diligent students do? They get to class 30 minutes ahead so they can warm up and shake it out, stretch whatever they need. Right. So when class starts, they can get the most value out of that instruction time. Mentally, right. it's the same thing. We've all had classes where it's like, oh man, I was on, I was dialed in, I was ready to go. And classes where it's like, I didn't retain anything. Right. Mindset, that prep, all these things you're talking about can set people up so that when you bow in or however class starts at your school, you're pulling the maximum amount of value from that instructor's time. 
Exactly. And, 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 you know, and the reality is, look, you know, like you mentioned the example of how sometimes your, your mind is not there. And sometimes, you know, that's going to happen no matter what you do, because yep. maybe you had a bad day at work or at home, or just, you know, you just, you know, had a migraine or, or you know, if you, whatever, like there, there's always going to be those, but the, you know, when we do these things, you know, these, 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 let's say these, uh, these tips, what we're trying to do is just maximize the, the outcome as much as possible. We want to maximize our ability to focus and our ability to absorb as much as possible. So like, if you do this consistently, then, then, then it minimizes those things from happening, at least within the context of your class. Um, and you know, it just like your, your brain, um, they, they've, they've done studies where they show they, they have somebody, um, you know, it, it, to, to show how much a, a, a relaxed, positive uh, a mindset goes to, to actually learning. They've done studies where they'll have uh, somebody before they're, you know, uh, taught something like, uh, they, they had them think about, like, they had them read a bunch of, like, negative words or, like, think about negative things and, mm -hmm. you know, for, like, a few minutes. Um, and, then that, and then that was the control group was to think about positive things. And then they looked at the, the, the results, you know, of, of what they were able to remember. I, I think it was like, you know, they, they had them list, they had to try to remember a list of certain words or something like that. The, the people that had that positive, more relaxed mindset were able to re remember more of those, that list of words than those that had a negative uh, mindset. And these were the same, you know, these were just all students, you know, college students. So it's not like that, you know, uh, it, it, you know it goes to show how much that, that positivity goes a long way to, to to, to making it that you can learn better. Um, another thing that I, that, that, that I think is helpful um, is, is, is when, say, you, you know, you're teaching me, you know, uh, certain moves or whatever. Sure. Before I start doing it, um, and, and especially if you've already done, you know, like you've, you've demonstrated three times and all that, the other one, before I start doing it, I would take maybe 10 to 15 seconds, close my eyes and just try to visualize that, you know, um, just so that I can be clear, because you know, I found that like when I would just start doing it, you know, uh, I would just start doing it, trying to like like capture the moment, and then at some point I would mess up, and I would still have to ask the instructor. Mm. But but you know, especially like when I've there's been a lot of information thrown at you, taking that 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 pause, you know, just taking that that few seconds to just sort of okay, what do I need to focus on, I need to okay, I need this move. All right, good. Now, now you, 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 you've given your mind sort of like this, I don't want to say tunnel vision, um, but like you've given your, your mind something to like aim at, to try to do this, you know, whatever the mm -hmm. move is and to do it. Um, and, and just the, that, that, that few seconds of concentration goes a long way. Um, also, if, if, as you're trying to visualize it, you might even beforehand just say, okay, I remember up to this part, I, you know, I'm drawing a blank afterwards. You know, yeah. Then you can also call the instructor at that point to, 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 to help out. Um, and then lastly, one thing that I definitely find, uh, has been helpful to, to, lo to, to, to long-term memory, um, is writing it down. And when I say write it down, I don't mean just, I, like, I knew, I knew we were going to get here. This is, yeah. this is the part of martial arts instruction training, the entire educational paradigm that blows my mind more than anything else is the For forgetting that you can write things down, or sometimes the resistance to writing things down. Yes. Well, blows me away. I can't. So, go, yeah. While while I stand here and, and continue to be <laughs> frazzled over something that didn't just happen, but it's just I'm bringing it up in memory. Uh, right, right, right. Talk about how important that is. Yeah. So so it's interesting. Like um, it's so important. It's so helpful, and yet there's a lot of you know, martial artists, I know that, that don't write things down and don't, or, or, you know, or they, 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 you know, and, 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 you know, I'm talking about people who are instructors now, people, you know, advanced, you know, and, and I think part of it is they, they had, they've had success um, mm. with their, their approach. Um, and, and it worked for them, you know, and so, you know, when something works for somebody, right, you know, like, you, what's that saying, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So like, I think for a lot of people, that's a certain mindset. And, and it's understandable because at the end of the day, repetition is key to absorption, to, to, to be able to like remember it. But, but what I find is that, you know, and this might be just because, you know, I'm, I'm maybe, you know, somebody that, 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 that is a nerd at heart. Um, I find that, that the best martial artists are. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
and, and, but I find that so in writing it down, it was you know I, it, first of all writing it down is an opportunity to mentally rehearse, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's like it, it, and it has the same benefits as actually doing the move, right? Mm -hmm. So you know taking it down is, but also as I'm doing it, you know other things pop into my head, you know. So maybe you know it could be like oh this third this third drill I really like that one, maybe I'll use it in sparring next time, or or it could be that that as I'm writing it down. Uh, out of the five drills, I could only remember the first three. The fourth one, I only can remember like the first two parts of the moves. The fifth one, I'm drawing a blank. But now I have a record of it. Mm -hmm. um, when we do the next class, I can refer to it. And then I, because I remember the first three, now I can add the rest of the information for the other two. Or the next day, I can go to the teacher and say, you know, you yesterday, you know, you taught this. You know, I just want to write it down so that I can. Mm -hmm. And again, I was writing it down. It's mentally rehearsing. Um, but, you know, so the benefit of writing down is one, it's it's a it's a you're keeping track of the techniques that you're learning, um, which will benefit you when you are doing your own training. You know when you you know because of, you know unless you, some people are able to just be at the gym six days a week. I was that guy for a while, you know. But life happens, and then you know uh, you get older or, or or whatever. Like just you can't train on that level of intensity anymore. You know you're working a nine to five. And, and so now you're tra now you're training less, but if you know all that stuff that that they, that you were able to to um, for, for all that knowledge to sort of like still stick stick with you, even if you're not training six days a week, writing it down is one of the ways to get to that. Um, mm. On top of that, you can you can um, use that sort of like to think about okay, you know, if I'm sparring, what are the techniques that I can draw on? Um, and you can look at your collection of notes and say, okay, I like. I'm going to, when I do the clinch, I'm going to try to do this. When I do, you know, my, my punching, I'm going to try this combination. And you can practice that when you're, you know, either hitting the bag or focus mitts or, or whatever it is that you do um, as part of your solo training or your training outside of the class. Um, and you can also just reflect in general, you know, you can, you can note, um, you know, when I was uh, uh, doing this form or when I was sparring, um, you know, I, I I felt that I was getting, you know, popped a lot uh, on the left side of my face. I think my hand was too low or, or, or something like, you know, why, you know, and, and, and then you can say, okay, well, what do I need to work? Like, it gives you things that, that, that you can use to, to improve yourself because at the end of the day, we're doing all of this, uh, not, not just to learn and be, you know, the know-it-all or anything like that, uh, but it's to, it's, to, it's to improve ourselves, right? Like the yeah. things that we take from martial arts, at least I find the things that I've, I've gained from martial arts have been, not just like the ability to defend myself and, you know, it, it, it's this, this mindset of like, man, you know, I can overcome things, you know, I can, I can, I can, I can, you know, uh, elevate my health, physical health. I can elevate my mind. You know, it's, it's done wonders for, for my soul, my, my, my sense of morality. Like, I think, it, you know, it's, to me, martial arts is just bigger than just, you know, the physical techniques. Um, so, it's writing it down, I think, is a way to engage with that and to engage with what you're learning um, and how it how it can become a part of your life. I completely agree. And one of the beauties of this this format that we have, this podcast format, folks who are listening and they're going, man, this has been, there have been a lot of good tips here. Grab a piece of paper, rewind to the beginning. You can even, depending on the player, you can set the, the speed to go, you know, two, three X and listen to what we're talking about. Oh, I should do this. I'd like to do this. Uh, oh, let me slow this down. Let me listen to this part again, right? And you can start to extract the information. That's when we when we talk about the show. When we, I say it in the intro: connect, educate, and entertain. Right? Yeah. We've connected, and hopefully, our conversation. I'm enjoying it. I'm assuming you're enjoying it. If somebody's still listening, they're probably enjoying it at least a little bit. But there's also the educational component. And that's one of the great things about this format versus so many others is the, the ability to rapidly internalize in your own method the information being presented. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So and, that, and, that, and, 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 and what I love about this too is that is that hopefully the, what, you know, the people listening um, will try it you know, and, 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 and experiment with it, you know, yeah. and, if, and if you don't, if you don't agree, like if, if you don't um, say you don't agree uh, or, you know, like you're, you know, you think, Oh, well, I'm not going to visualize it's, it's, that's stupid. 
Yeah, exactly. I don't need to visualize. You know, like I, I've been able to just do. I, I've been able to make it this far without. You know, why do I need down. that? Fine. Um, and and you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're you. You're gonna do. You know what 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 you think is right for you, and and if it works, it works. But try it, you know. And if it does, and and try it because you might be surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. Uh, but also, I'd be curious to hear, like, to, to, from this person, like, okay, you know, why didn't it work? If you don't think it works, you know, what was it that didn't, you know, connect? Because, again, like, I'm still learning from these things, and I'm still, I find, like, that, 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 you know, keep an open mind, and you try it, and see how it works for you, see, you know, you know, maybe the benefit for writing it down is not so much that it helps you remember the technique. It might be that it's the self-reflection, or it might be that it helps your, your, your fight strategy, you know, or it might be just logging the, the data, like, for example, I, I, my, my, my arm reach, my, my left hand is, is about 30, 30 inches long, 30.5. And my right is 29.5. And before I, you know, before I measured my, my reach, I always wondered, you know, like when I'm sparring, my jab is just really good. You know, I'm always able to keep, you know, no matter, no matter their height, whether they're yeah. tall or short, my jab. So I was like a jabber type of guy. Like when I would jab, just bum, 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 keep it. And, but now it makes sense, you know, the data, that data, like knowing that my, my left hand is slightly longer, you know, by almost, you know, by an inch makes sense to me why it's more effective, you know, and it might, and, and it could cut Like if I was competing, you know, uh, if I was a professional boxer or something like that, knowing that, um, or I would want to work with my coach, you yeah. know, what are the ways that I can use my long reach, you know, in a fight uh, against, you know, this type of opponent. And I would guess before opponent. that, before knowing they were a different length, you might've blamed your pivot. I'm not pivoting. Right. Enough. There's something I'm not exactly. letting that cross come forward enough. Right. Right. Yeah. I might've been like, Oh, you know, I'm like, you know, or, or I'm telegraphing, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm telegraphing. So they're able to, you know, pop me or something like that. And, and, you know, and then, you know, maybe it is some of that too, you know, it could be a number of things, but the point of like doing the, you know, it, it's, it's so much of like the work of, that, that you need to put in as an individual into your training to constantly improve it, right? You know, yeah. uh, there, there's a, Tennessee Williams has this quote, the condition of the artist is to never be satisfied. And the way I, I took that to, and I think he, he, he came up with, he wrote that somewhere um, after the success of um, A Street Crime Named Desire or one of those mm. plays that like launched his career and like took him, you know, like made him a big, you know, rich guy. And the, what I took from that though, is the, the, the condition of the artist, the condition of the fighter is to never be satisfied. So like, you might be the champion right now, right? Don't settle for that. Like, don't be like, there's still, you know, first of all, you know, nobody's the champion forever. Eventually people are going to figure out your game, you know, you know, age catches up with you, but whatever, like Tom Brady is like in his forties and, you know, <laughs> winning Super Bowl. So, you know, age might have his limits or age might not be as, as limiting as one might think. But the point is, is that, don't be satisfied and just content. Like I made it. I'm a black belt now and I'm done. Hey, you might, there's something else to learn. You know, you can refine Always your something technique. else to learn. Yeah, yeah. You can change your, your strategy or you can learn something new, you know, and now totally. you're a beginner again and that's fine. You know, it's humbling, but at the same time, it's, it's just going to expand you, you know? So I, I like that idea of like, you know, always be, you know, don't just settle. Don't be satisfied. Like strive, you know, do better, try better, never settle. Do better. Forget the word try. I heard that Forget somewhere. The word try. <laughs> all right there we, we could probably go hours more i mean there's there's so much and, and we we hit surface on a lot of this stuff but I, I think it's this is a good place to to circle back and start to wind down because I, i'm i'm going to hope that based on this experience you'd be willing to come back at some point in the future so my request to the people listening and watching is to go through this information, try to work with it. And if there's stuff you want to go deeper on, let us know, yes. you know, especially if it's something more specific. Do you, do, do we want to follow up episode on I don't know, visualization for martial arts or taking notes for martial arts? I take notes on each and every episode because we need them on the back end. If you're not taking notes, then you're probably, you're probably not getting as much as you could out of it and there are all different ways that you could take notes and you have a maybe this is a good time to throw it to you oh yes for, for so, those things behind so, you yes yeah, so so there's definitely um so this is the jimmy book journal of instant memorization input um and it's a it's a notebook tailored specifically for martial artists um 
the way I the way so one of the things that that that's cool about it is is that it has it's got rule page on one side and mm-hmm. and blank page on the other side because there's like like you mentioned there's different ways of note taking right we all know the traditional you know write the words down but you maybe you want to use flow charts right I don't know if you could see it. Maybe you want to use flow charts. I, I can see that you drew some stuff on there. Yeah. yeah. So this is like a flow chart, especially like in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. People like to say, okay, like, you know, what are the different, like, all, all the different things, uh, the, the, if I'm on the mount, the different ways that I can, you know, if I do this and then that person, you know, create the mount chart, to triangle right? to exactly. Just, yeah. And then, you know, but there's also mind maps. Um, you know, if people are familiar with mind maps as a way to like uh, uh, take a lot of information especially from, you know, that's, that's, you know, a lot of pages and put mm-hmm. it into one page. So it's almost like at a glance, you get this overview picture. And there's also a shorthand system, um, right? So this shorthand system, hold on. so that sometimes people don't want to write notes because, and I know you can't really see the, all you know. The, Give the, us the an example of, of a couple of those. So a short, like a basic one is, is think of the jab right mm-hmm. um the word jab instead you can just write j you know and for the cross a c mm. and for you know uh, uh uh the hook an h and so then when you're when you're um writing like certain combinations down um what you could do instead of writing you know jab cross hook cross hook cross you can just write you know you can just put the j the c the h and All just right link on. it like that so that way you know it, part because when you're reviewing stuff you know it's nice to also be able to see something uh, th- you know, like if it's too messy, it kind of s- can be difficult to read. Mm. So even if just like at a glance, you can look at it. Okay. Oh, left, right, you know, uh, um, high hook and, nice. and, and whatnot. If you can see it quickly, you know, it also helps to, you know, I can put this on the floor, you know, it lays flat so I can leave it on the floor. And I can oh, is, is it spiral bound? And, it's not spiral bound. It's a, it's a, it's a okay. uh, Smithstone it, binding. Okay. So it's great because you oh, can leave nice. it and, and it lays flat. Uh, so this is perfect for when you're like training at the gym, you know, you can just look at it, you know, page through what you need to do. Um, it's got an index in the back because part of also, again, what I think is useful with a, with a, a, a notebook when you write things down is to be able to find the information easily. If I was to, you know, keep track of all my, uh, if I was to write, fill up the book, and then I wanted to find, you know, the, say some techniques that I learned at mm. a clinching class, you know, how am I going to find it? And I have to flip through pages and try to remember but that's what the index is for. So that oh, you're right. working on You've, your book. You, you really you know, thought you, this out. I'm I'm hooked. And just as a reminder for me, it comes in later. Uh, we don't get paid to bring people on. So when I say what I'm about to say of uh, where do I buy this? Because I want to go buy one right now. Um, totally. Oh. Th- th- we're, we're not receiving anything from this. I am genuinely interested. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Well, to buy it, there's, there's actually, uh, you just go to the website, masteryourmoves.com. Okay, sweet. And, and there's a discount for the, the podcast listeners. If you, oh. uh, if you put in Whistlekick21, um, you'll get $5 off. Oh, and thank it's free you. free shipping and handling right. in the United States. Hey, well, let's, uh, let's make sure here. See, I'm taking notes. <laughs> Whistlekick21 code. There we go. All right. Okay. And you've got another book. So, so yeah, so I, this is a, this you can find on Amazon. This is um this is a book I wrote about 10 years ago called mixed martial arts fighting techniques published by Tuttle. Um, and, and basically it's a, a, uh, oh, I'll just hold it in my, in my hand. So yeah, yeah. it's a, it's, it's taking uh, techniques it, it basically from my background, in, which is a Jeet Kune Do taking what, a lot of what I learned in Jeet Kune Do um, and incorporating it um, into, you know, how you can use it, whether you're competing, say, in MMA or fighting in the street. Mm-hmm. So the idea is, you know, each chapter is a, a, takes a, a, a segment of, of, the, of, of uh, street fighting mm-hmm. and, and MMA. So, like, there's a, there's the first part is striking, right? Um, punching, you know, like, the things that you can do for the streets, you know, like some of the dirty fighting things. Um, and then the stuff that you can use in the ring or, or on the mat, same thing with grappling. Um, there's, there's sections on knife fighting. Um, and, and the idea is, is how, you know, you can train for both and then say, if you want to, to train for competition, you know, these are certain baseline techniques that, that, that you should know. And then if you want to then add sort of, sort of like a street reality based scenario to it, you know, fighting against somebody with a weapon, 
nice. you know, you can still use some of those techniques and just modify it for, for those type of scenarios. And okay. so that's what, that's what's uh, in, in this book. And where, where's that? You said Tuttle published that. So I'm guessing Amazon? Tuttle published that. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Okay, nice. You can get it on Amazon. Awesome. And, and we'll have the links to all these things that in the show notes Definitely. so people can, can check out there. Um, and what we're, I've got a feeling we're going to talk again. Something tells me that Definitely. this is not our last time, but I do have one more question. So the acronym for the notebook was J-I-M-I. Right, right. So did you start, if you're watching, you know why I'm asking this question. Did, did you did you start putting together the acronym and go, oh, and get really excited? Or did you <laughs> did you start with Jimmy and reverse into it? So, so, um, so it's funny. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to like, so, so that I don't like go off on a tangent. Um, Tangents are the, fine. The, well, cause so, so, you know, my, my, uh, my nickname is Danny Indio and my, my actual name, my real name is Danny Jiminian. So it harkens to, oh, okay. you know, the Jimmy in that. Um, and, but I'm also, you know, some, some, some people think I'm a Jimi Hendrix fan. I don't know why they would think that, but, um, <laughs> but no, but seriously, uh, it, it kind of, worked because you know it's related to my name and then mm. you know and then just jimmy just you know i Beautiful. think maybe in my subconsciousness it was like you know jimmy jimmy but it was um, meant to be but yeah i think i worked i think it came out sort of like how can i take this this part you know this, this jimi and you know um actually i don't you know now that i think about it i don't know if there was like a it was sort of like enmeshed you know like it i think maybe i was thinking yeah. journal or notebook and then as i was trying to think okay like what what is and then it's, oh, wait, instant memorization, Jim, Jimmy, you know, I think it kind of like was this hybrid, um, you know, I don't think there was like, oh, Jimmy, how can I turn this or, or you know, I think it was a hybrid. Cool. But um, this, part of what I'm, what I, what I do, um, I am trying to put together like either, or I'd like to put like a webinar or, or some kind of like a video course on mm -hmm. some of the things that we were talking about. And um, so if, if you also go to the website and subscribe to the newsletter, you know, once, you know, I'm in the midst of putting that together, once that's up and running, you know, your listeners can. Oh, nice. Have, yeah. Let us, know, let us know, know when it. that happens and, and we can, we can share that out with, with everyone. Definitely. And then um, of course, you know, like uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, master your move one and Instagram, Facebook and YouTube master your moves. So you just, you know, search that and you'll find me. You're so, all you know, feel free to like and subscribe. I put some, actually, I put some visualizations um, on the YouTube. Oh, uh, channel just like so that you can listen it's you know meditate it's almost like it's very meditative mm. uh, but again if you if for anybody that out there that 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 feels like you know maybe i need guided uh, visualizations to like help me you know work on on these visualization aspects feel free to take a listen and you know find out a uh, 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 figure out you know for yourself then how you can do it and incorporate your own training your own uh, 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 style into it mm. awesome well, I appreciate you coming on. And if thanks people, for having me, Jeremy. Yeah, this this has been a ton of fun and, and you've got my mind rolling. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm churning right now. So many of the things that we talked about are are floating around not only in the way that I learn, but the way that I teach and things that we've got going on. You know, when we talk about this subject, typically we're talking to instructors. And and I like the fact that, you know, we get the opportunity to talk to everyone on this show. So I I I'm going to say it this way, and then I'll invite you to, to kind of close up. We're all responsible for our own education. We, I am my own best teacher. You are your own best teacher. And if you just kind of lay yourself in front of your martial arts instructor at a class for one, two, three hours a week and expect to have knowledge jammed into your brain, well, there's probably a better way. Yes, I agree. I think, yeah. And, and, and to, and to echo that, um, there's definitely a better way. And there's also like, you want to get to a point. I mean, I think a, 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 a valid, worthy goal to, to, to achieve is, is you, want, you want to become somebody that can self-teach, mm. right? So, so, so like when, when I think of like what my teacher has taught me, it's not just the actual techniques and drills. You know, the, the best teachers that I've learned from are the ones that have taught me how to then continue teaching myself. You know, yeah. how to continue, you know, taking what they've given, you know, whether you call it critical thinking or whether, whether you call it, you know, a way of looking at things so that then, then it fits into my approach and then I can use that and keep growing because 
no matter what, you know, you know, uh, uh, it's it's rare that you stay with one school, you know, right. for the rest of your life, you right. know. So like, say you're in a school for one or two years, you know, great, you know, like you, I'm sure during that one or two years, you're gonna learn a lot of great things, mm -hmm. and and but then you want to carry that with you, you know, so that like if you, for example, had to move, now you're in Hawaii somewhere, you know, you left New York and you're in Hawaii, um, you can still remember you know you can still practice what you had learned you can still use that in whatever you think you're doing out in hawaii and one of the ways to do that is you know you can look at your notes you can reflect on the things that you learned and incorporate that in so that it stays with you so that it's not just like oh that was when i was young that i did that no it, it can be something especially at something like martial arts which has so many health benefits and can also protect your life in, you know if you're ever in a situation that that requires you to defend yourself so right you know Take that and, 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 and make it your own. I want to thank Danny and Dio for coming on the show. What a wealth of knowledge. I'm, I'm really looking forward to building more of a relationship with him. This guy's got some good stuff. Make sure you're checking out the things that he does and the, the notebook, the book. I mean, really, it's rare that I start off on such a great note with someone, but the comments he was leaving on our YouTube post were just like ridiculously good. And I think that's why today went so well is because I went into this knowing this guy and I were on the same page. If you're on the same page, check out the show notes, check out what he's doing, check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, check out whistlekick.com and use the code podcast15. If you want to support us, you can do so many things and they're all listed at whistlekick.com slash family, reviews and Patreon and all that good stuff over there. If you have a suggestion for somebody to come on the show, let me know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. And that brings us to the end. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.